Best in. Welcome back to the Community Connection. I'm James Jackson, your host on this afternoon, and I want to thank you for joining us. It's a great show because you are here with us. Joining us on the live line is Dr. Umar Johnson, and uh, he will be coming to Indianapolis February 27th, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Jewel Event Center, 3333 North Illinois Street. Uh, for a lecture, making his first visit to Indianapolis since his sold-out 2015 Power Lecture, the undisputed king of the black conscious or conscious community, turning to discuss the rising tide of police violence against African people in America. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, so, uh, talk to us about uh, what's going to be going on uh, coming up at this great event at the Jewel Center. Yes, sir. We're going to focus primarily on the school-to-prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with the special education wars against black boys, as well as the overdiagnosing and the misdiagnosing of ADHD and conduct disorder amongst black boys, as well as the prescribing of very dangerous psychiatric medications. Uh, the goal of the lecture in honor of 2017 Month is to empower black Indianapolis parents with knowledge of the law and their rights as parents in the so they can more effectively advocate for their children. Too many black boys in special ed, too many diagnosed as retarded who are not, too many diagnosed with reading disabilities and ADHD, which serves as the expressway to the school to prison pipeline. And uh, very, very interesting um, remarks here. Uh, you know, one of the things uh, that we found out a few years ago, Indiana Black Expo did out of that report, discovered that we have more of our children in remedial programs than gifted programs. Is that uh, kind of something that you, you'll be talking about or what you've just mentioned? Uh, without question, actually, mental giftedness, the MG classification, which a child only gets or used to get by being evaluated by myself or one of my colleagues, a school psychologist, that was removed. Mental giftedness was removed from the special ed register approximately. And as a result of that, gifted has significantly shrunk around the country. The reason for that is twofold. Number one, whenever you put a child in special education, they get extra money. And it's very important that Indianapolis black parents are not putting your child in special ed to help them most of the time. They're putting them in special ed so they can economically benefit from your child. A special ed student in America is worth as much as a regular kid. So let's say, for example, in Indianapolis, they spend $10,000 per every regular education pupil. Well, once your child is classified and placed in special ed, they're worth $20,000. So special children are a prized commodity. That's why they're so quick to pull the trigger to get black boys tested and diagnosed. So with MG no longer being a special ed disability or ability, they no longer get the money for finding mentally gifted children. And because they're no longer financially subsidized for pulling out the gifted kids, they're no longer looking for them. Wow. Um, so, so now it gets down into the economics then. Very much about the economics. Yeah. If one special ed kid is worth $10,000 extra, could you imagine how much a hundred of them what right. about a thousand? Do we even know how many black children are in special ed in Indianapolis versus Gary mm. versus the other cities in Indiana? What is the state special ed budget for black children alone? It'll probably blow your mind to see how many millions of dollars are coming into school districts to educate our children that is not being spent on them in the name of special ed. And what parents need to really understand is that the labels we put on your children, the labels we put on your children, now I'm a doctor of clinical psychology as well as a school psychologist, so I go between the school and the clinic. Mm -hmm. I do clinical as well as school evals. But parents need to know that the labels are largely the professional opinions of the evaluators. There's no scientific way to prove a reading disability. There's no scientific way to prove a math disability or ADHD. They are professional opinions only, which is why parents need to be careful before they give permission to let someone diagnose the child. And you talk about the uh, school to prison pipeline, and uh, that's something you'll be talking about uh, when you come. Um, how close or far away are we from turning the turning the dial on this thing? We're not 
anywhere near where we need to be. And the black parents are not doing enough to protect their children. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I always tell black parents, when you go to the school, don't take any, pen, any ink pens with you. Why? Because black parents have this habit of signing off on paperwork in the school without reading it. I regularly come across parents who say, well, I that signing that gave them permission to evaluate my child. I didn't know signing that allowed them to put my child in special ed. I didn't know that authorizing this form gave them the power to put my child in an alternative discipline school. Well, why aren't you reading these documents? Mm -hmm. So African-American parents must shoulder at least 50% of this problem. 50% of it is on the district, but the other 50% is on because we keep going along with a system that's designed to prepare black girls for poverty and black boys for prison. All right, 317-239-1310, we have uh, Dr. Umar Johnson on the line who will be here on the 27th of February to do a lecture. I also want to ask you, you talked about the overdiagnosis of uh, ADHD, and of course when children are kind of moving around a lot or doing different things, a lot of times they get uh, almost automatically get diagnosed with that. Yes, indeed. ADHD is a weapon of mass destruction in the black community. You can walk into almost any public school in our cities and ask all the boys in the classroom, if you take medicine, raise your hand. And I promise you, in 85% of the classes you go into, at least half of the black boys will be raising their hands. And in some classes... All of the black boys will be raising their hands. The American Psychiatric Association gave us the diagnosis of ADD in 1980, 1980. That's the same year that crack cocaine came into the black community, the exact same year. Also, in 1987, it, it was transformed from ADD to ADHD. It's no coincidence that this category came to us in the 80s, because that was the period when America began its mass incarceration campaign against black males. So they locked the fathers up, leave the boys at home to be raised all alone with their mothers, and a woman cannot make a man. And so as a result of that, the discipline tends to lack a little bit. And so this whole diagnosis of ADHD, conduct disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, this whole little cluster of behavioral disorders, that's what they call them, behavioral disorders, is nothing more than the result of taking fathers out of homes, okay, which is why I refer to ADHD as ain't no daddy at home disorder. ADHD. <laughs> wow. Uh, what do you see as long term? Uh, of course, we see the negative effects of this now, but uh, you know, the Lord willing, twenty five, fifty, seventy five years from now, what do you see as long term effects of these dangerous diagnoses? Well, here's what the African American community needs to understand: not only in Indianapolis, but around the world. The United States Constitution does not give our children a right to learn. The United States Constitution doesn't even mention the word education. The United States Department of Education was created in the 1980s. It is a fairly recent department within the executive branch of the government. And there's a lot of congressmen on Capitol Hill who want to eliminate the Department of Education because they don't understand why they're paying taxes to pay for black children to be educated when their Constitution does not require that. So I see a future in America where there will be no public education in the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. Your child will not go to school unless you build one for them or you can afford for them to pay. It's no coincidence that you're cutting down hundreds of schools. It's no coincidence that in Detroit they're shutting down hundreds. Here in my hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, shutting down hundreds. This is by design. And why? Public school was started to prepare black people to go and work in the factories. Mm -hmm. It was industry that dictated public ed industry in the inner cities no more. The factory and what's left of it has been shipped out to second and third world nations. So what is the purpose of public education in a city where you don't plan to hire the black men? The only purpose of public education is to prepare them for prison. So they're shutting down the schools because they no longer plan on giving jobs to black males. 
Very, very interesting uh, perspective. And for those of you who are listening, you're listening to the voice of Dr. Umar Johnson. He's going to be here in Indianapolis on Monday, February 27th, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Jewel Event Center, 3333 North Illinois Street. Um, and some of the things that you're hearing on today, certainly you'll be able to hear more in depthly on Monday. Doors do open at 4 p.m., and uh, this will probably be a capacity crowd event. Uh, Johnson, you talked about the the uh, rights uh, that parents have. How can parents find out more about what their rights are? Well, number one, I'm going to thoroughly go through the primary rights that parents have in the school at the day in Indianapolis. So I hope they come out to get the information. Also, they'll be able to get a copy of my book, Psychoacademic Holocaust, the Special Education and ADHD Wars Against Black Boys. In that book, I list the rights that parents need to be aware of. So they need to read that book and read it thoroughly. And then on top of that, um, I host a free black parent teleconference every Tuesday morning. In fact, we did it early this morning from 6 a.m. until 8 a.m. where parents can call and get free advice. But three quick rights that all parents need to be aware of. Number one is the right to say no. Mm -hmm. This is the simplest right, but a lot of black parents don't think they have a right to refuse the request of the school. You have a right to say no to the special education evaluation. You have a right to say no to special education. You have a right to say no to the disciplinary transfer. You have a right to challenge a proposed school expulsion. You have a right to challenge suspensions that are beyond five days. I mean, parents really have a right to stop whatever the school wants to do against their children. But our parents walk in there and they uh, believe that they are just uh, active participants in a system over which they have no control. Parents have a lot of power, and it can really change what's going on in the school if they only would organize with each other. That's an interesting point you make about challenging suspensions more than five days. Can you elaborate on that? Without question. The uh, federal court, federal court had a rule years ago that a child cannot be suspended more than 10 days at a time. So, And I'm a former school principal as well. So I can suspend a kid up until 10 days. Mm -hmm. 11 days becomes a temporary expulsion. The only entity that can temporarily or permanently expel a child is the school board. But to regularly hear parents, excuse me, principals tell black mothers that I will put your child out of the school. You cannot do that. The only thing a principal can do is refer refer your son to the local school board, Indianapolis Public Schools, and then they will make the decision on whether they're going to expel your child. But guess what? Even if your son is brought up for an expulsion hearing, you have a right to due process. That means you have a right to inspect any evidence that they're using uh, to uh, base their expulsion upon. You have a right to present witnesses in your son's defense. You have a right to question any witnesses that the school is using to substantiate uh, their need to expel your child. So even at the expulsion hearing, parents have a right. And when, it, and when you're dealing with suspensions of three days or more in many states and five days or more in most states, parents have a right to request a hearing to discuss the basis for the suspension before the principal actually executes it. All right. Uh, powerful. Finally, uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, you'll be talking about PTSD, post-traumatic slavery disease. Can you talk to us about that? Without question. We are 152 years post-emancipation. 152 years post-emancipation. When slavery ended, black people in America owned one half of one percent of all of America's wealth. Here we are, 152 years later, with our athletes and our entertainers, and we still only own one half of 1% of all the wealth in America. We have it under control of America's wealth expanded beyond a half of a percentage point in one and a half centuries. And that can be traced to the mindset of black people. Every culture in America is here to do what? Create a cultural empire. The Chinese are here to create a cultural empire. The Arab, the East Indian, the Latino, the European, the Anglo-Saxon. And right so, black people are the only cultural group in America who are not looking to build power so they can protect the destinies and best interests of their children. We want participation. Everyone else wants power. And while we complain about the schools and complain about the police and complain about a lack of jobs, we have to look at the fact that we participate in our own oppression. 
We spent $600 million on McDonald's last year. We spent $2 billion on Air Jordans last year. $4 billion on uh, liquor and malt liquor and alcohol last year. Black women spent $9 billion on term last year. So when you look at the spending habits of African Americans, we clearly have the ability to solve our own problems, but we don't have the self-love, we don't have the commitment, we don't have the self-respect. Most of us are not even proud to call ourselves black men and women. And in that lies the, the source of the issue. Powerful. And would, would it be fair to say that uh, building that power uh, goes on into ownership? Without question. In fact, one of the things I'm going to be talking about in Indianapolis Monday is how we need to rethink sending every black child from high school to college. We need to rethink that. You want to know why? We have 2 million African Americans in this country with master's and doctorate degrees who are unemployed. And the reason they are unemployed is that although college gave them a degree, college does not come with a guarantee of employment. So if every black parent continues to send their children to college, all we are doing is investing in their long-term debt to the banks of America in the name of higher education. Seventy years ago, our elders did not have to have the college education to live a decent life. We were all mechanics, they were plumbers, they were electricians, they were chefs, they were cosmetologists, and they were able to eat because they knew how to use their hands. They took all of the industrial building trains out of most of the inner city high schools, and now they tell every black child in order to make something out of yourself, you have to go to college. We need to fight to put these industrial building trains back into the high school because when you look in any inner city, the new construction projects are being put up by exclusively white labor, exclusively Mexican labor, exclusively Chinese labor, and you have unemployed black men sitting on the side of the room with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and they're not even qualified to work for that project because they don't have the certification. We think college bring back the building grade. Well, Dr. Johnson, thank you uh, so much uh, for the the passionate and the powerful points that you share with us on this afternoon. And uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you on Monday. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. And again, for those of you who are listening, we're going to go to the phones, uh, those of you who have been holding uh, on this Monday, February 27th. Doors open at 4 p.m., and this is going to be taking place at the Jewel Center. The Jewel Center is lo located at 3333 North Illinois Street, right here in the beautiful city of Indianapolis. That's uh, Monday, February 27th, 6 to 9 p.m. is the time that the lecture will be going. And uh, the tickets are just 20 dollars uh, but wow look at all the information that we got just in a short period of time uh, with having dr. Johnson on the phone um, so 317-239-1310 want to get your analysis of dr. Johnson's remarks and also um, how, what do you think about some of the things uh, that he shared with us on today brother Kimmett thank you for holding and being so patient welcome to the program you're connected and right back, peace and blessings, family. As so above, also below. Well, it was good to hear Brother Omar on there, and uh, I'm I'm glad his uh, father came out on the uh, YouTube and whatnot, and and expressed his uh, lack of understanding for the conscious community. Because I did hear you call him the King of Consciousness, and let me tell you, boy, that was like stirring up an angry beehive uh, in the conscious community. But uh, that's uh, another thing that we have to start to come to understand about the conscious community. There are no leaders. There are no leaders in this conscious community. And what is desired above all things with the conscious devotee is humbleness, humbleness. And I'm glad uh, Brother Omar found that, and um, everything he said was spot on. You've heard me say it. You've heard uh, Brother Imhotep, Brother Larry, uh, uh, Brother Jeff, and uh, quite a few of the conscious community members here in the city, and they've been getting tons of money for uh, these special education students, and um, I'm not going to hold this up to too long, but a caller earlier, he mentioned that same particular thing about the prison system. They were upset because they didn't have enough prisoners that were supposed to be provided by the state. For all you people out there listening, the Dow. The Dow is 50 of the world's main stock. And places like CCA, we have one downtown, and 
all over the uh, countryside. They get money for this uh, prison, uh, school to prison pipeline. And uh, Dr. Omar hit on it real good. Peace and blessings, family. Always good to hear your voice. Easy, Rab. Keep on with the keeping on. Thank you, uh, Brother Kemet, for your call and comment. And uh, we got some other folk holding on the line. Certainly want to hear your response and analysis of Dr. Umar Johnson's comments uh, just a while ago. We'll be back after this. Thank you. 